out as a grandfather for the second time. That spoiled the James Bond image a bit. I guess, uh, how many of you have seen a little auto gyro fly? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I got hooked on them because I, I had two years in America in strategic air command. I was always interested in small aircraft, and I'll explain later on. My father and uncle had made a very advanced aeroplane in 1910. The first steel tube aeroplane in the world, it transpired, was the Warboro monoplane. But uh, always interested in aviation, and uh, uh, I bought for 30 shillings, one pound 10 shillings, or one pound 50, I uh, bought a, a glider in 1939 from a friend who'd just been called up. But it was 54 foot wingspan, dual control thing, but it needed two or three friends to put it together and take it apart and move it. Something small appealed to me. And while I was in the States, the uh, uh, Dr. Igor Benson came up with the plans of a do-it-yourself gyro glider. Now, I'd already acquired some target plane engines while I was in the States, some McCulloch target plane engines, and I decided that when I came back to the UK, I was going to make a powered version and with a conventional control stick, because the other one had a hanging stick moving in the wrong sense. And I also said to myself, and if it works, it's going to be a stepping stone to something practical. It wasn't going to be the one, because there were lots of things I didn't like about it. In fact, the uh, Dr. Benson designed his thing on the base of a, the basis of a thing that was made in this country during the war, early in the war, designed by Raoul Hafner, an Austrian who'd come over here in the 30s because Britain was the place to get things done in those days. I'm sorry to say it's not quite the same now. And he designed a successful autogyro, but um, he was interned as an enemy alien very briefly at the start of the war and then was released, and he designed the Hafner rotor chute. Now this was a thing that could be towed behind a, a Whitley bomber, a string of them, and they could cast off and glide and land where they wanted. They had a, a hanging control stick and so on. Of course everyone said, oh, we can do that with a parachute. But in those days, when you jumped out with a parachute, the wind decided where you were going to go, and it could be the, an embarrassing place. <laughs> <laughs> so.